Other headlines now. It has been a decade since one of the darkest days for the tri-state area and the country. The shooting at Sandy Hook Elementary School. The Newtown, Connecticut community continued its tradition of quiet reflection on this day. 20 first graders and six educators were killed on December 14, 2012. CBS 2's Dick Brennan here now with more on how families are still leading the fight against gun violence all these years later. Dick. And Maurice and Christine, 10 years ago after Sandy Hook, so many thought things would change, that perhaps the tragedy would be a turning point in the nation's attitude toward guns. But since then in the U.S., there have been nearly 4,300 mass shootings, 38 of them at schools. Even so, the families of those lost little ones fight on in hopes that the terrible continued violence can be stopped and that out of the worst, something meaningful could happen. Tonight at St. Rose of Lima Church in Newtown, a mass for those who died and prayers for those who survived. They saw unspeakable horror, something no one of any age should ever see. And now those who saw the unspeakable horror are teenagers who cannot forget. There were moments in that classroom where I sat worrying that I would die. Worrying that that door would burst open and I would never go home to see my mommy, daddy, and my siblings. It's important for children to grow up and live a normal childhood and experience a childhood that like I never had because of, it was taken away from me because of Sandy Hook. There are 26 names on the Newtown Permanent Memorial. The water perpetually moving, that sort of never ending circle, that, that circle of life. Michelle Gay lost her daughter Josephine, killed at the school three days after her seventh birthday. I literally remember feeling like this grief was going to swallow me whole. The anguish that no parent should ever suffer was repeated over and over. At almost every one of these funerals, the mothers delivered the eulogies. And that in itself was just powerful as they came up to, to this pulpit. And, um... <laughs> Um, came up to this pulpit and just stood there and talked about the beauty of their child. Dylan um, was this gorgeous little boy with these gigantic blue eyes. He was always smiling and laughing. On the last day of Daniel's life, mm -hmm. I taught him how to play Jingle Bells. One month after Nicole Hockley and Mark Barden lost their young sons, six-year-old Dylan Hockley and seven-year-old Daniel Barden, they helped launch Sandy Hook Promise, a nonprofit focused on teaching people to notice the signs of trouble. The group says they've helped stop at least 11 credible planned school shooting attacks in seven states, and they hope that all parents can be part of the solution. And I want them to look at my son and see their own children in his eyes and think about what can you do as a parent, grandparent, aunt, uncle, to take meaningful action so that this never happens to you. Now in June, Congress passed a law that includes enhanced background checks for people 18 to 21 and invest money in mental health resources and red flag laws, which allow authorities to take guns from people deemed dangerous. But legislation against things like assault rifles have gone nowhere. Maurice. All these years later, Dick, thank you. And for more on today's coverage, go to our website, cbsnewyork.com. There you will also learn about a foundation building playgrounds in memory of the victims.